Welcome. Starlink has finally released the Starlink Mini. Is it a disaster? Or is it going to be the next great thing with Starlink and satellite internet? So we're going to take a look at the Mini. It is a great asset for disaster response, emergency services. And it's going to be a very popular item with the RV community, I think some. And more so with the backpacking, uh, maybe off-road communities, and uh, maybe even the, the bicycling uh, community that are doing more of the wilderness type and long, uh, long circuit runs, um, both on motorcycle and bicycle. So let's take a quick look at it. It is available now. We just want to let everybody know on the channel that uh, you can order it. There's no requirements of uh, having to uh, have um, a uh, permanent home system or any of those types of things that they have over the past couple weeks. We kind of held off on uh, doing any kind of release when it uh, all of a sudden started to pop up. Um, you know, this unit, uh, the pricing is a little bit high. Uh, I think it's, uh, they're trying to make up maybe a little bit of that money uh, to help subsidize some of the uh, costs that they're going to be discounting to in some other countries uh, to try and get it out in areas that are uh, in uh, really in greater need uh, from a standpoint that they don't have any coverage at all. So this is something that could be, really be deployed anywhere in any country that Starlink has authorization to, uh, to work with. So let's take a quick look at it. You can get online. Uh, if you have an account, you can get online. You can check it out and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, when you order it that um, you're paying attention to what you get as far as data. You've got, uh, originally they required uh, you to have just a 50 gig and then add a gig extra at a dollar which really isn't bad if you're spending fifty dollars getting fifty gigs that's probably good for a lot of applications and if you're going to use more even if you use another fifty gigs that's only a hundred bucks that you're going to be putting into it as opposed to hundred and fifty if you're going to be a heavy user and you're going to use a primary all the time uh, on the road then you know definitely get the get the standard uh, uh, plan at the hundred and fifty dollars with unlimited uh, mobile access so we'll take a look at the unit. Um, same design as the standard. It's a lot smaller. Everybody, you've all seen the, the comparison to a notebook. And that's about what the size of it is. It's about a size of a notebook. And uh, the uh, unit, uh, when you get the box, what you're going to get in the box, obviously, is the unit itself. And it does have integrated Wi-Fi, so you don't have a separate box. You can shut off the integrated Wi-Fi in the settings and use a uh, external uh, router or access points uh, just like you can with the other Starlinks. It's got the kickstand um, to give you that standard just lay it out on the ground or on a table. They included a pipe adapter. I think it was a good move because that allows you to do a bunch of other stuff. So obviously you can put that on a pipe. That's what's intended for. It is a single bolt, sort of like the uh, standard. We didn't like the standard uh, because um, it didn't have a real deep throat inside of this piece where the pipe goes in. And then they have a single bolt right there that tightens it up. This is a much smaller, much lighter dish. And, you know, this is going to work for it. And there'll be a bunch of aftermarket um, brackets out there for different kind of mounting. Um, I, I like on uh, the standard, I really liked the uh, roof mount. That was a nice setup. It gives you a pipe. And if you don't use the roof mounting plate, you can uh, take and put that uh, pipe down into another pipe and use it for some other applications or hose clamp it onto a, a roof rack or something like that. But um, this will allow you, and we're a big fan on our deployments and on our our current public safety units is to uh, put a ball mount and we're we're using the large d ball mount uh, from ram on most of our stuff 
so you can screw that right into the into this bracket um, and use the ball mount and then put the other pieces on and it gives you the ability to pull in you can run it flat you can do you can use these in motion so you can run it in motion when you get on scene you can take it off if you needed to put a longer cable if you got over a hang from trees or you can just align it and then you're always going to have a better signal if you do the alignment so just keep that in mind you know you don't have to and you'll probably have uh, more than enough data uh, but if you want to have that really better if you're setting up and you're going to be there for a little bit i always recommend that you align it we do that now with our standard that we're using portable and uh pagers are going off the uh other thing uh, they're coming in they're giving you a 15 meter um they're giving you a 15 meter cable so that 15 meter cable uh, equates to uh, about 50 foot just under 50 foot length and that's the power cable and uh, they're giving you a power supply which is a plug-in uh, wall brick and the uh, barrel cable will plug into the bottom of that and you also get the Starlink plug which will be in the unit and that that plugs the uh, RJ45 connector up and keeps that sealed up for uh, water if you're not using it if you are going to use it ideally you want to use their cable the, um, you can use some standard RJ45 you know cat six seven eight nine tens you know uh, in in there you just have to watch uh, the the clip on it uh, you make sure that that clip is not going to end up locking doesn't do that on the standards we haven't tried it yet our units uh, proverbially in the mail and um, but that keeps the uh, RJ connection uh, dry uh, some of the basic uh, information um, I'm only going to hit the critical things. You know, you can read this, but the important part is uh, field of view is 110 degrees, which is pretty much the same as the new standard, the version four that is uh, what's being currently sold. And um, that that antenna is a good antenna, a little bit better performance than the uh, version twos, the articulated um, unit, <clears throat> and uh, the orientation is all done manually, so for the most part, if you have that laying with a yeah, about a 6 to 8 degree tilt on it, you do the tilt, not so much for the satellite view, but now is to keep rain from pooling, because if you get little puddles of rain, if it's laying flat, uh, that, will, uh, that will impede the signal, and obviously snow will do the same, so with that little bit of tilt, but if you're running it on a vehicle in motion, uh, you can run it flat. Um, but the little bit of tilt, if you're using the bra their bracket when it comes out, like the bracket for the version 4, um, gives you about a 6 degree tilt on it. Uh, uh, wind speed, they're saying uh, up to about 60 miles an hour. It better be mounted at 60 miles an hour. It, it, you want the pipe mount connected or something connecting it to something. Because uh, 60 miles an hour is just going to blow it, blow it away, obviously. Um does have snow melt capability and uh, you're going to you're going to go up into the, about the 60 watt range with the uh, snow melt on normally it's it's going to be anywhere 20 to 40 watts depending on what it's doing and it, whether it's transmitting and receiving um, so that that opens up doors the input uh, range is uh, 12 to 48 volts which is pretty much standard poe voltages uh, 60 watts they're rating it at um, so if you, um, if you use any of the, like a Jackery or any of those, um, that have the, um, USB-C PD connector on it, most all of those will give you at least 60 watts. Some of them will give you hundred watts at 20 volts and that will run it. And the, uh, there's a bunch of cables on Amazon that you can get um, with that barrel connector you just got to make sure you get that 2.5 with about a one inch or longer barrel just remember that's not going to be waterproof so hopefully um, Starlink's going to come out with some more offerings on some uh, DC cable and one of the things that you know we're looking at we've we played around and we'll, we'll do it on the, on the mini as well 
is uh, be able to run a cat cat five excuse me cat six seven eight whichever you want depending on your cable probably an outdoor grade um, uh, with a 45 connector on it and we can run that up and then go to a poe extractor and then pull the voltage off so we can feed the poe voltage up through the ethernet cable be able to bring the data back from the uh, dish to um, an access point or another router and feed the uh, antenna with a voltage somewhere in that 20, 20 to 46 say volt range. Um, if you're running a longer wire, you want to use the higher voltage from the source to the antenna because you get line loss on the cable and that's why they have that wide range on there. Um, USB, they're saying uh, ideally you want to have a 100 watt rated and that's because if you go in, if you're, if you're pushing um, the unit at 60 watts with the heat on, uh, you're probably going to be hitting the limit on maybe that battery. But for normal use when you're not using the uh, heater, uh, you can probably get away with that 60 watts with no problem. Um, the rest of it is, um, it is, it is not Wi-Fi 6, doesn't need to be. You know, you're, you're, you're pulling, you know, we've run a lot of things for a lot of years on Wi-Fi 5, and, uh, it works great. There's advantages on 6, it would have been nice if it had been 6, probably a cost issue, but, heck, we'd have been paying maybe $700 if it, uh, was Wi-Fi 6. So, you know, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll upgrade that at some point. Um, and it, it is a dual band three by three, which is nice. Uh, so it, it is a little bit more modern and, uh, they're saying about 1200 square feet. People have been saying four to 500 feet out in distance from the unit. It's designed to cover basically a camp, you know, or a vehicle. Um, so if you need more coverage than that, be prepared to stick some sort of a, uh, other Wi-Fi access point onto it, which you can do, and uh, you can uh, get a TP Link. We're, we've been using Ubiquity for years, but I've sort of gone over to TP Link, especially when we're trying to feed a camp. If we have um, a disaster camp, and we're going to put up two or three Starlinks, and maybe a FirstNet LTE for the public safety side of it um, as some backup. And the unit on the uh, TP link will allow us to uh, load share up to four inputs. And that way, if one fails, we have a second or we have a second and a third, depending on how many we're putting on there. And it, and it helps divide that load up. And we've, we've run off of, this, off of two of the standard articulated units for Ian. We ran a camp with over 100 people using the system at one time. Yeah, it was slow, but then also the system, the satellite system itself, Starlink, was very slow. You know, you're going back almost two years now for that. So a lot more satellites, a lot more speed up there. So, and you can go over the, the other standards. Size, um, you know, we're, we're in 11.75 uh, by 10.2. So it is notebook. A little bit of thickness to it. Uh, less than two inches, about an inch and a half at the widest. Um, and then it's got the same back on it where the bracket slides up and locks into the tabs and you'll notice they got two different sets of tabs on here that's to give them options uh, in the future and uh, depending on what kind of bracket you're snapping into it and and there again power supply you know we talked about that so it's you know the cable the, the you can run it off of 110 that's what they're giving you and they're giving you that barrel connector but you can rig that barrel connector up use ideally use their connector um get some extras and if you have to you know cut off the uh, other side of it and you can adapt it to whatever kind of power source you can put a cigarette lighter it should run off of 12 volts they say um but i would i would try and be running it off of that uh, uh pd at, at the something at least 60 watts or 100 watts out on a usb pd and um and they have a number, you know, there's some resources, uh, setup guides, and um, 3D models, and 
and and that out you know what take a look at the 3d model to see what it pops up here if we can get it to get it to come up uh, not gonna let me run it but basically that's the the short of it um, it's available you can get it now and that's what we just wanted to let you know that if you if you've got trips coming up I would get it and get it ordered quick it's been out for about two days now to the public and um, you want to you want to get your order in because uh, I'm sure that they're gonna go fast even at that six hundred dollar price which I think is a mistake on their part um, I don't think it's costing them that and I think realistically they're they're trying to subsidize and get get it out and maybe generate some of that extra revenue I mean they've taken big losses on you know like the commercial dish is 2500 and it's I'm sure it's way over that we know that the first the version 2 articulated where they were saying those were about two thousand dollars to manufacture and they were going out at six so they're trying to get makes a little bit money on I think on the front end of this and they're going to help to use that to subsidize some of the countries where they're trying to get the systems in because the system's underused and the, the you know the people in the countries can use it they they don't it's going to open up a new world to so many people um, and we'll see how this goes where we've got a couple units coming in for our uh, team um, from our public safety standpoint you could use this for a small command post trailer you know or a command vehicle type of setup I would I, I would think if you're going to use it on a bigger trailer I would go I would go with a standard dish and get a little bit better speed and capacity on the uh, you know the version 4 standard dish uh, for that this can be used and and there's an obvious military uh, application for this as well as a public safety for backpacking and uh, we're looking at that we have to look at from a safety standpoint uh, what's the radiation coming off the unit if it was to be to put on your back on the top of your backpack at an angle and being left on and what's the radiation effect on the person carrying it uh, can we do that or is that gonna gonna put that person at, at risk for exposure from them because we're talking basically it is microwave the frequencies that we're at here um, so we'll take a look at all those things and we'll be back um, with a a setup and we're going to show you the 12 volt please subscribe subscriptions are what drives uh, YouTube and we're not monetized yet we have to get more people to subscribe hit the like buttons please uh, if you like it and please make comments um, and if we can get monetized that helps our disaster team and our technologies unit uh, be able to get more units if you want to donate to the technologies team if you want to buy as a star link uh, either either a um, uh, version 4 the new standard if you like to buy as one of those or that you can uh, send us a send us a message either online here make a comment or or go to rescueinternational.org and and click on the donate there and and or send a text and you know we can tell you what to do and where to send it you can buy it online and and uh, send it to us or you can send us a uh, um, gift card through Best Buy and uh, Best Buy has been really handy because when we needed something in a hurry we can usually find a Best Buy that's got something sitting on the shelf so don't have the minis yet though I don't believe didn't have, didn't have them as of yesterday anyway um, locally so thank you very much please subscribe that's critical for us to build the channel and uh, questions and comments uh, are always welcome and hopefully constructive thank you very much and have a safe day and press on Thank <laughs> you.